Welcome to the Nibosh revision videos. My name is Dr Julie Riggs and I will be sharing additional free resources for those students studying the Nibosh certificate. This video is designed to complement element 7, chemical and biological health hazards and risk controls. Within this video we will be exploring an exam question, the techniques for answering and how to ensure maximum points. As I've mentioned in many of my videos, when we consider exam questioning, we often refer to that 25% of the knowledge that you apply is good general knowledge, another 25% of the marks are due to technical knowledge, and the remaining 50% are down to good exam techniques. The videos that we provide today are designed to complement your existing training material and are not intended to be your sole educational aid for passing NEBOSH examinations. So let's have a look at the first question. This question is divided into two parts. Part A, outline the differences between acute and chronic health effects, four marks. Part B, identify the factors that could affect the level of risk to an employee exposed to a hazardous substance, four marks. You may wish to pause this video to work out the answer. Give yourself four minutes per question, that's eight minutes in total. So before we answer, let's examine the actual question. Firstly, we want to look at the action verbs. Part A requires us to outline, which means give the most important feature, which is less depth than either explain or describe, but certainly more depth than list. Consider a bullet point with perhaps a line, two lines underneath. Part B requires you to identify. This is select and name. Therefore, we don't need descriptions, uh, nor do we need a lengthy explanation. We can also see that the examiner is looking for four diverse answers for question A and four diverse answers for question B. And when we use the word diverse, we mean try not to be too repetitive. Remember that you're trying to show your breadth of answer here. Then look for any other key points also within the text. So you can see in part A, we're looking to try and establish the differences between ac acute and chronic. In part B, we're requiring to identify the factors that could affect the level of risk to a hazardous substance. You may find it useful to underline those keywords on your exam paper to ensure you remain focused. If you know that you're the type of person that will start writing the answer before you've read the question properly, put your pen down. It will ensure your entire focus on the questions. Make sure you check those action verbs check the marking for each of those questions and give yourself suitable timings to answer. To assist answering this question, you may find the video Route of Entry and Health Effects useful. We've used this particular model to guide us through this question. You may also find that before you start the question, doing a little mind map may help you. In this case, you can see that I've divided the mind map into acute and chronic, and I've asked myself some key questions. When does the effect appear? How quickly does it affect a person? When does it go away? And clearly you can see that I've already started to note some differences between acute and chronic. So let's have a look at one of the answers. So for question A, outline the differences between acute and chronic health effects. And you can see that I've got four quite distinct answers there. First, acute health effects, the adverse effect, appears after a single or short-term exposure to the agent. The response is invariably rapid or immediate and can be reversible. Chronic health effects, on the other hand, usually result from prolonged or repeated exposure to the agent. The response is normally gradual, may go unrecognised for long periods of time, but is often progressive and irreversible. To assist the examiner, it's always useful to bullet point each answer, so it's very clear what response that you're providing. You may also find it useful perhaps to underline those keywords, and again, it just makes sure that your answer is very clear for the examiner to see. 
In this particular question, it was very important to ensure that you incorporated whether a health effect was reversible or not reversible. Let's look at question B. Identify the factors that could affect the level of risk to an employee's exposed to a hazardous substance. So remember this is identify, you don't need to give a long explanation. I've given five answers in this area, um, but you only need to give four. So you can see that I've identified the route of entry, so we're talking about the toxic substance into the body and the associated mode of exposure. The concentration, the physical state and toxicity of the substance the level, the duration and frequency of exposure, the effectiveness of control measures that are in place, personal factors such as age, gender, health status and susceptibility of those exposed. You can see I've got four very different answers there. If you were to answer using four different examples from personal factors such as the age of the person, the gender of the person, the health status, the susceptibility of those exposed, it's too repetitive and you would only generally get one mark for those. So try and keep it quite varied in your answer. And again, to help the examiner, you may wish to underline some of the key answers that you have within your text. Answers generally for this um, need to concentrate on substances and duration. If you start giving answers around whether a hazardous substance is toxic, corrosive, harmful, irritant, that's okay, but don't spend too much time answering it. Um, otherwise, you'll just end up with a list of hazardous substances, and that's not what the examiner is looking for. So if you found this video useful, please like or subscribe to this channel. With positive feedback, we will continue to upload further videos to assist with your studies. And again, if you're looking for any particular topics, please email us direct and we'll assure that we try and cover topics that you find helpful within your studies. Good luck with your learning programme.